Hello, and thank you for checking out this project on using Adobe InDesign CC. This project will teach you some of the basics of using InDesign if you've never used it before, and will create a simple project of a book cover, which is something that's pretty common for graphic designers to have to create. So let's go ahead and get started. We can create a new document whenever you come to the welcome screen of InDesign by clicking on the Create New button here. Now, whenever you begin saving out documents, you'll see some recent files popping up here. So if you don't see the button, you can click on the Create New button on the left-hand side, or you can go up to the top and click on File, go to New, and then you can select Document. I'll just go ahead and click on the Create New button. When you do that, it's going to bring up the new document window. And here you can see any recent items that you've saved out. Or you can go to the top and click on saved for any saved default presets that you want. And then there are some presets already created for you to begin using. So if you click on print, you can see some print presets, web presets, and mobile presets. So go on over to print and you'll see some blank document presets. So these are just uh, preset up blank documents that you can choose, or you can click on one of the templates below. So here you can already see that some magazines and books have already been made. And if you, you see one that you like, you can click on that and begin creating immediately. However, we're going to start with a blank document. So go back up to the top and click on the view all presets button. And this will show you all of the di different presets that are in InDesign. Now I'm using InDesign CC 2019 throughout this course. So if anything looks different, you may need to upgrade your CC subscription to the latest version. Here under the presets, you can see we have our basic letter and legal presets and tabloid. You have half a letter and half legal size, A5, A4, and A3. And the one we're going to use for this project is going to be the B5. So go ahead and select that. And when you do, you'll see the preset details change on the right hand side. Now we can go ahead and change any of these out that we want. So let's go ahead and click on untitled and give it a new name. Then we can set the width and height. However, they've already been set for us whenever we chose the B5 preset. But I don't want to use the picas as units of measurement. That might be something that you're comfortable with, but I'm not. So I'm going to click on this drop down, and you can see we have all kinds of different units of measurement that we can use. If you're in the US, you might want to use inches. Uh, or if you're using metric, you might want to use millimeters or centimeters. Now, I am in the United States. However, whenever I design for the web, I like to use pixels because the numbers are easier to work with than inches. And it's the same thing with me for print. Whenever I'm working with print, I actually like to use the metric system because the numbers are just easier and nicer to work with. If you want to go ahead and select inches, go for it. Just keep in mind that as we begin creating throughout the rest of this course, I'm going to be talking in millimeters. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and select millimeters now. And you'll see the width and height change to 176 millimeters and 250 millimeters. Now we can also change the orientation of the paper, either portrait or landscape. We can say how many pages we want, and if we have multiple pages, do we want them all shown? We don't need facing pages, so we can just uncheck that for now. We have our starting number page and primary text frames, and we don't have to worry about that. If we scroll down, you will see we have columns, margins, and bleed and slug. Now, if these are hidden, they might be closed for you. So if it looks like this, you can just click on these little drop down arrows and it'll open it up for you. So columns, we just want one column, that's fine. For margins, it's set to 12.7, which is pretty common. Uh, however, just for the sake of of it being easier for this particular project, I'm gonna make it a nice round number. Now, typically I would probably just leave this uh, as the preset default uh, chooses, but I'm gonna go ahead and make this um, all tens. And it'll just be easier for us to work with, with numbers when uh, we have, have to find out any dimensions. So then go down to your bleed and slug, and the margins are gonna be how much space you have between the edge of the paper and where you're going to be creating. And it just gives you a little bit of space, it's easier to read, and it makes sure that you don't uh, get too close to the edge and then when it gets printed out, it gets cut off. The bleed, however, is gonna be 
an extension past the page. So this is actually an overprint. And the reason why you do this, if you think if you've ever um, written anything out on paper or drew something out and you try to cut close to the line, you might not make a perfect cut and you could see a little bit of that edge. Well, what the bleed does is it gives us a margin outside of the printable area that we can use to make sure that we overshoot the print and then when it gets cut down to size, it'll look nice. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, for now, you can set this to a small number. It can be three. I'm just gonna go ahead and use five millimeters so we have plenty of bleed to work with. And then the slug is for any additional information that you would like to include. So if you wanna have page numbers or title subtitles or something like that you can add a slug we're not going to worry about that for right now we just want our margin set and our bleed set so go ahead and click create whenever you're ready and this is going to bring us into the main InDesign workspace. Now, if you've never used InDesign before, but you have used an Adobe product, you will recognize that the layout is pretty much similar. So at the top, we have our menu bar with file, edit, layout, type, object, window, and so forth. On the left-hand side, we have all of our tools that we can use. We have our main workspace in the center, and so you can see the area where we'll be working. And then at the top of that center area is our tab for our document. It says book cover design at 99%, so it shows how much we're zoomed in in the name of the document. There's also some rulers and guides on the left and top that we can use. And on the right hand side, we have our panels that we can set up and use for the most frequent or common panels that we would use. In the main workspace, you'll see the big white area is our actual artboard or where we will be working in InDesign. And then you'll see a purple rectangle on the inside, and this is our margins. So when we set 10 millimeters, you can see the margins that have actually been created around the area for us to work with, which is great and easy to work with. And then the red uh, rectangle on the outside is our bleed marks. So if we extend our image out to the bleed marks and then the printer cuts this down to the workspace, we're guaranteed to make sure that we have a nice uh, smooth corners and edges and the image fits properly. If we were to have the image up to the side and for whatever reason, even if the printer was off by one millimeter, you might see a white trim around your uh, book cover and that's not what you want. 